Hi everyone, welcome to Raw Online. Moving on to the pathogenesis. So you all know like the particular virus is going to cause fibrillar blister and following the blister there is going to be the involvement of olfactory bulb or there is going to be the latency in the particular ganglion. So you all know the herpes simplex is going to have an latency in ganglion like sacral ganglion and trigeminal ganglion and after like many years when the immunity like goes down the particular virus is going to cause the latent infection or reactivation of the infection. So here like there is going to be the involvement of olfactory bulb or due to the reactivation from the ganglion like trigeminal ganglion or sacral ganglion. So following the reactivation there is going to be the full blown encephalitis. So that is the pathogenesis of the particular viral infection and the main risk factors being like contact with the secretions like saliva and also the sexual transmission and like when we in contact with the body fluid which is going to contain that particular virus like this particular virus is going to have a local multiplication after that there is going to be the involvement of the olfactory bulb or in many cases it is going to be the reactivation from the ganglion so following the reactivation the particular virus is going to enter the central nervous system which is going to cause the particular infection called encephalitis where there is going to be severe inflammation of the brain so coming to the clinical manifestation so being an infectious etiology the patient can have fever here and the patient is going to have episodes of seizure and there can be neuropsychiatric manifestation which range from delirium or coma and the patient can also have focal neurological findings like myoclonic jerk tremor and ataxia may be there and the futures of meningitis can also be present and you all know the futures of meningitis is going to be findings like nuchal rigidity and positive Brudinsky sign and positive Koenig sign. So these are the various future which is going to tell us if the patient is going to have a symptom which is suggestive of encephalitis. The patient can also experience like altered consciousness, the patient can have dementia, the patient can have futures like dementia and the patient can have visual disturbances, photophobia could be there. So these are all the clinical future which is going to be suggestive of encephalitis and most of the time the patient can present to us with a complaint which is going to suggest you of meningitis. So those kind of clinical symptoms can also be there. So moving on to the radio, radio diagnosis. So like whenever we have some patients with the central nervous system history and there is going to be history of infection. So we will be going into the non-invasive investigation. So here the investigation which will tell us about the particular encephalitis could be the radio diagnosis. So the radiological imaging can be either CT or MRI. So here like it will give us an idea about uh, the involvement of the particular brain. So here the patient can have uh, a finding like a gyral enhancement, there can be leptomeningeal enhancement, there can be ring enhancement or there can be a diffuse enhancement with or without other findings could be there. So these are the finding like which is going to suggest that if the patient is going to have something like meningitis or encephalitis.